you've got to negotiate your way. Oh dear, that's not good. Hi there, uh, my name's Chris. I'm a beekeeper from the southern part of New Zealand and I'm on a journey. I've gone from uh, doing a day job, teaching on a degree course to deciding to become a full-time beekeeper. Hopefully you'll enjoy following along with me as I work my way from having just 40 odd hives to having enough hives and enough bees to make a living over the next year or so. I think you might enjoy watching it because uh, success is not guaranteed. In the last video I made these strips here, they're called oxalic acid strips. If you want to find out how I made them go back to episode 6. In this video I'm going to take these strips, not actually these ones because these are still wet, I'm going to take some that I made in my last batch which have dried thoroughly and I'm going to put them inside a hive. Something happens while I'm doing that that I wasn't expecting, that I didn't plan and that took a wee while to fix. So this video is going to take a, it's going to be a bit longer than it should have been because I have to fix my own stuff up. Let's get on with it. So I did a mite check on this hive a few days ago and I counted one mite per 100 bees which is not an alarming level but uh, I'm going to be doing a spring treatment to all my hives regardless of how many mites are in there. Now's the time to get them fit and healthy before we ask them to start producing brood or honey or whatever it is that you're going to produce. It's a bee straight in my face. These are my cloak hives and uh, that means I'm going into them quite often which means they're getting a bit grumpy. Don't blame them really. So I'm going to whip this top box off and put the strips in the bottom box first and then get this back on top. So I'm going to smoke them quite heavily because I want to get the bees down so that I don't squash too many. Now the brood nest is in the middle and in this particular hive there's brood top and bottom. I used to only put these strips into the box that had brood in it because of course that's where most of the mites are on the nurse bees and in the brood. But the uh, latest advice I've heard is that it's best to put them in both the brood boxes top and bottom at the same time. So I'm going to do that this year just to be on the safe side. So these go in, they just straddle, this is part of the reason why they're called staples is that they look like a staple and they just straddle a brood frame. Now I want to put four in and I want to put them on every second frame so that I've got a strip down every gap within that brood box. So if I put one, two, three, that's in the wrong place. It actually needs to go over one. If you slide them in gently, they don't do much harm to the bees. Now you will find that in the brood chamber, where the strip's hanging down, just like a commercial strip, you may well get a little patch behind the strip where the queen doesn't lay. And you may even find a little bit of dead brood in there if it ends up pressing hard up against the established brood after, on the day that you put the strips in. Now this is the most important point for this video and it's one of the reasons why I like this form of treatment. Unlike the vaporizers that are very co in common use all around the world where you go in and you puff vaporized oxalic acid into the hive and of course as we all know it's a, what we call a topical treatment, it only kills the mites that are on the bees and the vast majority of mites in an infested hive are in the brood because that's where the mite lays its eggs and so after you do that vaporising treatment the next batch of brood to emerge will bring with it 
a new batch of mites which means that you have to vaporize again and again and again and, and it's repeated treatment that makes that methodology work with oxalic acid and I'm not knocking it, it's an effective method, many beekeepers use it. The difference here is that once I put these strips in they just stay there. They stay there until the bees have eaten them and destroyed them and tossed any residue out the front door and that could be some time. It depends on the bees, it depends on the hive and it depends on the temperature and the time of year and so on but I've had strips that have stayed in my hives for uh, three months and that's giving an ongoing treatment and I can tell you that in, when that happens you have a very very low level of mites so that's one of the advantages of the strips one of the disadvantages is it means every time you go to check your hive while the strips are in which as I've just said is for a long period of time you've got to negotiate your way oh dear that's not good It hasn't happened before. I'll just leave the camera running. Can you actually see what just happened? The box that I sat on the table behind me just fell off the table. I'm just hoping that there isn't a queen in there. There's every probability that there is. I'll bring that camera around. <laughs> Something about having the video camera running makes me drop things when I don't normally. So, I was in the middle of giving you a lesson or my, just explaining my methods. I'm not trying to teach you anything. I'm just showing you how I do things. So, I'm going to watch where I put my feet. If there was a queen in this box, when it fell down, with a bit of luck, I'll be able to find her on the ground, if she's on the ground, if she's still... <laughs> on a frame, well, that's not so bad. With this hive still quite weak on this top box, I'm going to have to boost it a bit more. There's brood up here. There's every possibility that the queen was on top. So if the queen fell off the frame, with a bit of luck she didn't get squashed, that would be the worst case. But the second worst case is that she could have fallen off the frame and onto the ground. So the biggest danger to her now is my feet. I'm just looking to see if I can see her. She's definitely been up here laying. Yeah, there's a little batch of squished bees. None of them are a queen. <laughs> the rest of them are just carrying on. So nothing's happened. Carefully put my foot down. There are a couple of little clusters of bees on the ground there. These two frames are quite badly stuck together, so I expect to find some dead bees underneath. I'm hoping to find my queen. She's definitely been in there, Lane. Actually, I'm not hoping to find the Queen. What I'm hoping is that the Queen is in that bottom box. Kind of a 50-50 chance, really. There's a squished bee there. One of the uh, good things 
about breeding your own bees, your own queens, is that if you do something stupid like I just did then, you can recover from it relatively quickly and cheaply. I'll have new queens available from that first graft in a week or so. Well, queen cells. Surprisingly few squished bees. Now, I've got a couple of piles of bees in the ground here. frame over the top of them for a few seconds. I'm hoping that they'll crawl up onto it. Yep, they've gathered up a heap of them. Just put that frame right next to them. Cluster of bees here. I'm just looking to see if there's a queen in amongst them. One day I'll tell you the story about falling out of a tree when I was getting a, an outdoors hive from a branch, cracking my ribs and still getting the queen. So there's quite a pile of dead bees just right there. Dead and dying. None of them looks like a queen. I think I shall retire that little three-legged table. Designed that. Designed that table so that it would not rock, but the legs just too close together. Three legs. I found my four-legged table works just fine. I just didn't want to go and get it out of the truck. I'm pretty confident that there's no queen on the ground. Still a few nurse bees down there, a bit lost. A bit of luck, they'll take flight and find their way back into a hive. Let's go back to what we were doing. Right, so where was I? Completely lost my train of thought. I don't like sitting boxes on the ground like that because I have to stoop down and pick them up, but better that than it falling over again. So I was talking about the brood cycle, I was talking about the mites, the fact that the mites were um, mainly in the brood and that when the good, one of the good things about the strips is that they are in there for a long time and so as the mites emerge they get knocked over and so you get a really really good kill. And I think I then moved on to say that the negative side of it is that every time you inspect a hive, you've got to fiddle around with these strips because they're, they're often obscure what you're doing. You have to pull them out and then replace them. Now the other thing is that as the size of the strips diminish sometimes you'll get a situation where that strip's been eaten out completely and these three are still fine or this one's eaten out and these two are still fine i'll move the strips around and keep moving them into the brood chamber because that's where the mites are and i leave them there until they're just little tattered strips Well, 
I'll come back to this hive in three or four days and just check for eggs, four days. If I check for eggs in four days, if there are eggs in there, then the queen survived that. Right, so same again up here. There is brood up here, so I would have been putting strips in here regardless prior to reading that uh, common practice now is to put four strips in each brood box, top and bottom. Of course that means you're using more strips. But the costings that I gave you earlier in this video, take that into account. I'm still treading around nurse bees under my feet. I've got four strips here, or more. These are nice and dry. Notice I'm handling them with gloves on. That oxalic acid in this form is extremely concentrated. And if, at the very least, it'll bleach your hands. If it gets, if you get it on your hands and then your hands get wet. I don't like the sound of that. This hive is roaring. It's the sound of a queenless hive. No, I hope not. But if that happens, it happens. Maybe I should uh, film a follow-up and let you know. So like I said, I won't know for four days. I could strip this hive to pieces and go searching for a queen, but they've had enough of a shock as it is, been, half of them being dropped on the ground. I think the best thing to do is to close it up again. So as you can see, with four strips in there, you've got a strip of, of oxalic acid impregnated paper between every frame, most of the way across. When I'm doing a five frame nuke, I put two strips in, just on the theory that uh, five frames is half of ten. So two strips is half of four. That does mean, of course, that uh, again, you've got a strip, because if you've got five frames, you've got four slots, two strips puts some oxalic acid in between every frame. Oh, I'm going to have to think twice about doing these videos. If every time I do one, I have a crash or a drop, but uh, I'm just joking. I'm enjoying doing this. I hope you're enjoying watching them. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. I enjoyed making it, except for the bit where I dropped all the bees, but uh, that's beekeeping. You, these things happen, you just fix it and move on. You guys know what to do. If you've enjoyed this video, you know the buttons to push, you know the subscribe and the like and the little bell and all those things. Until the next video, bye for now. It's a week later and it's time to dive into this hive and have a look and see if we've still got a queen. Why have I waited the whole week? Well, the weather's been pretty ratty and I just wanted to stay out of the hive until things looked, started looking up a bit. I don't need to find the queen. All I have to do is find evidence that there's been a queen in here in the last few days. Which means basically eggs, or very, very young larva. Larvae. Larvae. <laughs> However you want to say it. So I'm diving straight towards the middle of the box because that's where any new brood will be. So while I'm here, I'll just show you that little patch of dead brood there. 
in here has been caused by that strip pressing up against it. The bees will clean that out. I did say later on I move the strips around and anything like that, once the bees can get into it, they'll get in and cleaned out. Alright, we're in that little empty patch in the middle. Ah, uh, some eggs. So that tells me without even seeing a queen that there's been a queen laying in here in the last three days. Once you get to know a bit more about it you can actually tell by looking very closely at the eggs as to even more exactly how long it's been because the egg starts looking one way and then changes. I might talk about that more in a future video. I mentioned in the earlier part of this video that the, one of the downsides of these strips is that they do get in the way a little bit. You just have to weigh that up, that inconvenience up with having hives that are thriving because they are mite free. Alright, I'll close this hive up again. That didn't take very long. And once again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I've enjoyed making the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.